this is Lyle Blackburn, and you're listening to the Cryptid Creatures Podcast with Brian and Todd. As I was waking up and starting to come to, I'm trying to move, and my legs are like kind of held together, and then I realize that I'm up against something. And that something is moving and it's got long hair on it and felt like there were, there was just matted hair. When she started to move and take a couple steps is when I realized that I wasn't like on the ground and I wasn't standing up. Like I realized I was being held. This is the Cryptic Creature Show. I am Brian, and with me as always, my co-host Todd. What's up, buddy? Brian, my friend, do we have an encounter on today's episode? Yeah, this I'm looking forward a, to this one. This is a unique one, for sure. We have not had this kind of encounter before, and the listeners are going to be amazed by this. We're going to bring on yeah, Toby. Toby uh, had a very crazy uh, encounter, and uh, yeah. happened, yeah. happened in a cave in West Virginia. So yep. um, we know that we've talked to him earlier about this and we're excited to have him on. So I don't want to waste any more time. Yeah, we are. Let's get him on yep. here. Right on. Let's get him. What's going on, Toby? Not much. Good to see you guys. You too, man. Good to see you. Glad having you here with us tonight. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're getting this done. Yeah, me too. We're excited about this one. This sounds like a quite the it, encounter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's, it was uh, pretty wild, man. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a long time coming. I'm glad to finally, you know, get to share my story. We're glad to have you do it with us. We appreciate it. And, yeah, uh, yeah, we appreciate it. So you're in West Virginia, is that right? No, no, I'm I'm actually from Indiana. Oh, okay. But so we, how about that? But the encounter did happen in West Virginia. Okay, that's why I was thinking. That. Okay, okay. What part of Indiana are you from? I'm from uh, Wabash. Are you there now? Wabash. Yeah. Yep. So you're about an hour and a half south far, of us. You're not far from us at all. Yeah. Oh, oh, where are you guys from? I'm in South Bend. I'm in Middlebury. Okay. Yep. Okay. So we're not far at all. Mm-hmm. Neighbor. Oh. <laughs> so how all old right. were you when this happened, Toby? I was 13. All right. Yeah. It was, it was right at the, I was getting ready to be in the eighth grade. I was a uh, seventh. It was like my seventh grade summer going into the wow. eighth grade. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's get into it and hear what happened to you, man. Tell us your story. Yeah. Tell us your encounter. All right. Well, so just to let you know what I was doing in West Virginia, um, I was a member of, it was called the Converse Church of Christ. It was my church. I was a member of the youth group and we were taking our little, you know, yearly trip that we would take. And this one was to West Virginia. The first day of activities, we did some whitewater rafting. And then the second day of activities, we were supposed to go explore a cave. And um, since you and I last talked, I actually did some digging because it, this was my first time telling my story was when, when we had talked earlier and a lot of questions came up, you know, like, I was young. I didn't really care where I was. Like, I didn't even know, like, what town it was in, what county, what was close to it. Didn't really know anything about it other than, you know, that's where the adults had taken me. And um, he doesn't want me to say the name of his cave and the tours because he's scared that people won't want to come and do tours, like, of the cave and whatnot. So I told him that I wouldn't do that, but I did get into contact with him. And uh, basically the way, the way it went down is you check into this place and it's about a 90 minute drive from the mouth of the, like the mouth of the cave, the entrance of it that we were using. We get there, we split into groups. There's four of us. And then like our guide person, because there were multiple people. It was a group of about maybe 20 to 25 of us that were gone so they split us all into groups we're at the very beginning and we were really the first group 
that was going to actually go. So me being young and with all my friends, I let us kind of get into the cave and the guide I'd already went across. It was like a, almost like a, there was running water and I was just walking over the rocks and they were kind of helping get the other people across. And I kind of took my chance and went up ahead of the group. I was going to find a hiding spot and hopefully scare them whenever they would get past me. So I went up, I was not really like running, but I was walking briskly to get up ahead of them, like as quick as I could. And I made, I made a few turns, a few bends to where I couldn't hear them talking anymore. Nobody was calling my name or anything. So I figured I got away from them. And as I turn around this, this bend, the, it was almost like a little bit of a, not like a hallway, but just like a narrow passageway that kind of opened up. And I started, I had this like hard hat, like a bump cap deal with a, uh, with a spotlight on it. So I'm looking around cause now it's getting a little bit darker back in there and I'm looking around and I see up to my right, probably about, I, I don't know, like about eight foot tall was this ledge. And I figured I was going to jump up on top of this ledge and wait for my friends to pass by and I was going to scare them. Well, when I was able to get up there, I had to get a running start and kind of kick my foot off the face of this wall. And I reached up and grabbed the ledge and I got up on top of there. Once I got up on top, I went to look back to like get my bearings and get balanced in my hard hat fell off in front of me and it kind of disoriented me because it was so dark in there and my hard hat fell. I went to lean back and I fell. There was a backside to that ledge that was similar to the front. Like it was just like a, like a little ledge for you to jump onto, but there was a backside to it and I fell off that backside and it knocked me unconscious. And, um, when when I woke up and came to, it was, I, I don't know if you've ever been, like, knocked unconscious, but it's just that. When you're waking up from it, it kind of, it takes you a second to get your bearings and to know what's going on, you know. I've been knocked unconscious a few times, you know, with my career in football and whatnot. And as I was waking up and starting to come to, it was... I didn't really know what was going on because it was, it's like waking up with your eyes closed. It was pitch black. You know, you couldn't see the hand in front of your face. And as I'm waking up more, I'm trying to move and my legs are like kind of held together. And then I realize that I'm up against something and that something is moving and it's got long hair on it and felt like there were mats of hair. I I, I don't want to say dreadlocks because that would mean, you know, like nice and uniform, but there was just matted hair clumps of it that I could feel. And then my head was up against it too. And I started hearing these look like, like a, a low, like a low rumble. Like, a, I, I, I felt like she, like she was trying to calm me down or something because that's what it sounded like it was kind of like a, when you're holding a crying baby, you know, how you kind of hum to them to kind of console them. That's what, what I was, was hearing. And as I'm slowly waking up and realizing these things, it's, I got a little, you know, I'd be lying if I said that I didn't get scared, but it wasn't the type of like, oh my gosh, I've got to get out here, get like, get out of here scared. It was like, what's really going on? And I kind of started to, I, it, it, I, I, I can't explain how weird that feeling was after being knocked unconscious, waking up, can't see anything and something's got a hold of me. Cause that's when when she started to move and take a couple steps, 
is when I realized that I wasn't like on the ground and I wasn't standing up. Like I realized I was being held. And one of the first things that I noticed was my right arm was kind of down back behind me like this. And my left arm was free. And when I tried to pull my right arm out, it rubbed up against the, it rubbed up against the front of this animal. And as I'm going, reaching up the chest, I felt like two, um, there's a reason I think it was a female, not just because of the way she treated me, but there, it felt, they felt like breasts and, and nipples. And I felt, felt it as I was going up. And when I moved my arm, I felt the hand come over and push my arm back down, like back down in, into my chest. And this other arm was still down and she grabbed it by that and put it and crossed my arms. And her arm is wrapped up and over them and held me like that. And her hand wrapped around both of my ankles and calves. Like she had big, big hands. After we had taken a couple of steps, I, I don't, I feel like I said, what happened or where are we? I, I said something to that effect and it was just a little bit more of a louder grunt and like a, a whoosh of air, like a, like she was huffing at me or something. And right after she huffed at me, I felt her, I went, I came away from her body and she picked me up and set me right on top of that ledge. And now that I'm up on this ledge, I roll over to my stomach and look back toward where I just was like where she was. And I didn't hear anything. I didn't see anything. It was just, that was it. You know, like there wasn't any like footsteps away. There wasn't any more noises. And I laid there for a second because, you know, I just taken a pretty decent fall and I was in shock would be my best guess. But at no point in time did I, I, I never felt like I was in danger. You know, I, I really feel like, you know, she, she knew what she was doing and she, she was helping me because I can only imagine if, if I had woken up on, on the ground, you know, I couldn't see anything. Like, I don't know that I would have been able to find my, you know, my way back. And I don't know how long I had been out. I think that my, uh, my group didn't even go the way that I had went was my best guess. Because when I turned my head the other way and started to try to figure out how to get down, I saw my, my hard hat and the, the headlamp shining straight on a wall that was just um, a little, a little bit of ways from when it had hit the ground and rolled. So I managed to get down and I just kind of had to do a reverse order of how I got up. I had to hang down and then drop. And at that time, you know, I probably would have been about, I, I was pretty big for seventh grade. I was about, you know, somewhere between five, eight and five, 10 and up towards 185 pounds. Like I, Drop down, I grabbed my, my hard hat and my headlamp and I started going back from the way that I had came. And I got back to the part where we had crossed the water and I knew where I was. And I made my way straight back to the entrance. And my group was back up there. They had realized that I wasn't there and they had went back to the entrance and they had sent one of the, um, people who does the tour, like gives the tour, the guide had sent the guide after me. And I told him, I didn't tell him everything that had happened. I just told him about trying to find a hiding spot and that I hit my head and I didn't feel well and that I, I wanted to leave. And when his name was Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Travis is the guy who was leading this, this church group. He, he noticed that something was wrong with me. He kept asking me, you know, like, are, are you okay? Or are you sure? And I just chalked it up 
with, with him that it was just from hitting my head and that I probably had a concussion that I had had one before the, my headache was starting to, to set in. Um, but he got a hold of my dad and I told my dad that I was just ready to come home. You know, I was really confused about what, what had just happened. It was, I didn't know who, it, who or if I could talk to anybody about it. You, you know, I've always been scared to tell my story because of just how unique it is or how, you know, unlikely it is to happen. I've always just kind of kept it to myself. And I feel like in ways that it's, it's stuck with me through, through all these years. I actually work underground now in, in an underground mine. And seeing a lot of these things in that underground mind takes me right back to it. You know, like it's, it bugs me that I haven't spoken up sooner. You know, like I wonder what would have happened if I had told my dad or told the people right there. And then, you know, like w what had just happened. I, I, I really don't know how that would have went, but I remember he had gotten a hold of my dad and my dad was here in Indiana and he said that he was going to leave right then, but that I was going to have to go back to the hotel and my dad was going to take me to the hospital after he had picked me up. But when we got into the church van and we're driving back to the hotel, I started smelling, smelling something. And so did, uh, and, and so, so did Aaron. And, you know, we were both kind of wondering what it was. And when and I found the source of the smell, it was right here on, on my forearm and on my whole right side of my body was just this. I, I'm, I'm not even 100 percent sure how to explain the smell because I never smelled it before and I haven't smelled it since. But. I definitely had a smell on me that neither one of us could place. And I told him that, you know, maybe I had fallen like in some, you, you know, some still water, some stagnant water or, or something whenever I was in the cave or I really wasn't sure how, how to explain that because I, I wasn't a, I wasn't a stinky kid and that's not what a stinky kid smells like really. You know, it was kind of this mixture of like wet dog, but a hundred times worse with a little bit of like, like after um, our dogs would come home smelling like they had been rolling around in something dead. It was ki kind of like that, but it, I, that, that, that's really the best I, I can explain the smell of it. But um, after we had noticed the smell, I was I, I was that close to, to telling him that somebody or something was in there and saved me because it took me to a spiritual place because we were there for, you know, for, for church. And I was around all, all of my church people. And here I am sitting next to my youth pastor. It truly felt like some powers were at work there. You know, because because I think back and then I'm wondering, you know, what could have had eyesight in that dark of an environment, you know, and I was thinking back again and that would be like the perfect place to hide for one that may have been curious, you, you know, it made me wonder even more why why she was in there, you know, because I kind of feel like that would be you'd be trapped in, in there and that that part confused me but after i had uh, talked to you and i got a hold of this place i got in touch with the guy and you know i had told him about what had happened and he told me that she's there like regularly and that there's there's something about the um, mineral deposits there that he thinks that they're they're after those mineral deposits, like the um, 
he 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 told me what it was to that they uh, they come and they 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 break them off or they'll use rocks and scratch scratch it off of of the cave walls and that she'll bring um she had young ones that she would bring in there and that he's seen them and that he feels like not only if it got out that people wouldn't want to come to that cave anymore but he feels like he's almost their, their protectors, you know, like, like that's a safe place for them that they, they've got what they need there in that area, you know, dense wooded areas, you, you know, there's fresh springs that come out in this cave with fresh water, you know, the food sources, he said the place is a perfect habitat for him and that he would hate for that to be, to be messed with, you know, right. because it is in, you know, an exact location where, where they are and where they are, you know, pretty often. And he had said that one of the guides had told him, you know, about, because when, when my group couldn't find me, it's like a, like a, there's a protocol or a policy thing, a procedure that they use there at the cave when they, you know, lose somebody, you know, there's a procedure that they follow. And he was notified about it. And he said that he can remember when it was and that that's where his mind first went was like, what, what did he, did he stumble on? You know, apparently that time they would only go into that cave like at night. And this was during the day, you know, like we, we had a, a pretty good conversation and he asked me, you know, like if I had any sort of, like Indian heritage or Indian in my blood. And, you know, I told him that I did. And he said that he's seen like correlations between them and Indians, you know, and some of the podcasts that, that I've listened to with, with you guys or of you guys, you know, a, a lot of times the Indians get, get brought up and I kind of, since the way that he had brought it up, it makes me wonder if he has spoken to to any of, of like the Native Americans around that area, and maybe they had let him in and kind of made him like a a, a protector. Because there's, you know, all, all the time when I see the people that that actually you know try try to put put the believers down or the knowers down, you know, they'll say, well, why haven't we found a uh, you know, a, a carcass or why haven't we done that? Or why haven't we done that? And it's, I think they're just as intelligent, if not more intelligent than us when it comes to staying hidden and covering, covering up the evidence that they had been there because I think they know what happens when humans find out where, where they are, you, you know, or not, not all of us, but most of us, you know, I, get to going back to this all, all the time, you know, she could have left me there. She could have taken me somewhere and ate me, you know, if that's what, if that's what, you, you know, if that's what she wanted to do. But I feel like she knew that she was taking a risk, but she, she did it anyways. And it, it, it just, it, it's been hard not to, not to share it. And, and not to talk about it. And I'm glad that I, that, that I finally sure. can, because it, it, it was a, a big, a big, you know, bit of a life changer because after that, you know, I'm, I'm just on a, almost on a spiritual level with, with nature. And, you, you know, when I go out to nature, I, I think about them every time. And part of me wants to, cause I didn't get to see her. You know, I, I want, I want to see, you know, I, I may have, you know, felt it, but my, the picture I have of her in my mind can change from, from day to day, you know, from different influences, seeing, you know, different depictions of them. You know, I just, I've, part of me wants to have an actual, you know, visual in encounter. And I've kind of thought about going back to, to that place, you know, just to, just to see how, how, it, how it makes me feel or if I feel anything or maybe I'll see her. I don't know. 
I really wish that when I had gotten up on that ledge that I had just been able to keep my hard hat on, you know, because I wonder if she was right there. And maybe when I got up over the edge, if I would have just looked directly over, if I would have seen her, you you know, or I wonder how she found it. Just Mm -hmm. there's so many questions that, that, that I have that I don't know if I'll ever be able to get the answers to. And that, that's a little frustrating, but there's also a, almost a a calmness about it, you know, cause I, like I I was getting pretty nervous before this, you you know, before like coming on and telling my story and it was that same childhood fear of, well, what if people make fun of me or, or don't believe me, You, you know, cause like I had told my wife, pretty much during the time you and I first spoke and I was starting to tell my kids, but they right away didn't, did, did not believe me. I thought I was totally joking. And, you know, I, I play around with them a lot, but I was trying to be serious with them. And I was just like, you know what? You're right. You guys don't fall for nothing. You know, and that was, they definitely didn't believe me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. did your wife believe you when, she, when you told her? It, I, I, I feel like she, I feel like she does. Well, she's saying from the other room, she does. Good. <laughs> good. She should. Well, she good. Should believe you. Good. And that, that does feel good, but you know, well, we believe when, you. thank you guys Definitely. because. And our listeners I, I, will too. Definitely. They're going to love this, this story. Oh, for sure. They're going to love this. Well, I guarantee you there's going to be a lot of people that ask us where it's at. Yeah. So, we're not, we don't want to know and we don't want to tell anybody. Yeah, we don't want to know. We we're not going to tell anybody. That. So, For me being an advocate of wanting Bigfoot, the more I think about it, I guess I don't want Bigfoot to be known uh, scientifically because it would kind of spoil everything and what we're doing in a way. But as much as I am an advocate for that and, and I don't want anyone to kill one, yeah, that's, no. I wouldn't want to, to disclose this area. Because what happened to you was a very, very unique and special encounter that we've never heard before. And even though you didn't get to see the creature, you had a better experience than 99% of these people that see these things because you had physical contact. You know, Mm -hmm. she, she carried you in her arms. And it proves that these things are kind and caring and they, and they do have a conscience an amazing encounter toby and they're not and, just wild animals no 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 and, right. and and you've done a great job telling us and mm-hmm. we really appreciate it man and we really do and, and we're glad you came on and talked to us it yeah it makes you, me maybe, wonder if there's if there was some kind of back entrance to that in that area that you fell into if there's another exit for her to get out of that way and the the, the man i spoke to says that he's pretty sure that he's got it there there's um there's a surface like almost like a, a surface entry. Mo- most caves will almost like develop like when there's a hard rain or flooding up on the surface, that water manages to almost always find its way down in, into the, into these caves. And that through so much water coming down and coming down and coming down, it eventually will find its way through and make an opening and he said that there are more than just the mouth of the cave, that there are multiple different ways in and ways out. Because when I was mm-hmm. talking to, to Todd, I was thinking the same thing, you know, like did she back herself into a corner when she came in there or does she know of more ways in and more ways out? Because as far as the cave tours go, it's just like a, like a loop through through the cave you 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 go in the same place that you go out and i thought that that was pretty interesting and when i had explained or tried to explain the as best as i could where i had went and the ledge that i was talking about he said that that's like the general vicinity of the activity that he's managed to find or discover or what or what have you Mm -hmm. and i thought that that was because i i went through a little bit of i i I gaslit my myself for years i i tried to think of 
every different way of what could have happened. You know, like there that there were all kinds of things that that I was putting into my own head that what could have happened. But just since you know, from working underground, I'm, I'm in a loader for you know ten hours a day. I've got no service, so what I do is I download podcasts every morning and I listen, I, you know, I try to get it as close to 10 hours as I can of downloaded content. And you guys, I discovered you guys and you guys always get at least two hours of it. You know, I, I try not to listen to all the episodes and binge all the episodes at once. Cause then I'm going to run out. I, I, I try to just listen to a couple of them per like per day. I guess. And hearing you guys and the way, the way that you treat the people who come on and tell their story, I, I felt, I felt safe to, you, you know, choose you guys. Um, I like that you let the, the person tell it cause you know, other podcasts will, you know, tell you to, to write it down and they'll read it, you know? And I, 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 I didn't want to do that. And, Mm -hmm. yeah i just really appreciate what you guys do because thank you holding this weight in eventually you just gotta come out and speak about it you know and i struggled too with you know like after talking to that guy you know there was no more i wasn't going to be able to gaslight myself anymore I, i i know what happened i know what i know what she was and you know, now I, I, I know her, her intentions and I would never want to endanger that. But I feel like anybody who's who's listening and anybody who like I don't think that they would do harm, but what happens when one day, you know, I, I do feel like I, I don't know what reasons the government has for keeping this under wraps, because I know that they want I mean they one hundred percent know that oh, for sure. Yeah. That they're out there, and if it was just another, just another animal, you know, they they would say that, and there would be a hunting season for them, you you, you know. And I hate even saying that; that just sounds gross. But mm-hmm. you, that's how it would be if it oh, yeah, was just. Right. A, yeah. Yep. And I, I've heard you guys talk about the um, what, what, where you know, like you get these these messages in your head like from them like 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 she she wasn't speaking at all but i just had this thought in my head you know like that i couldn't get scared you know like i should have been freaking out i should have been hitting her i should have been oh, wow. flailing trying to get away but i let her cross my arms <laughs> and i lay there you know and right. All I kept feeling in, in my my heart of hearts was it's going to be okay. You're fine. Like just this calm. It's going to be okay. And when I felt her, you know, right, right, right here, the noises that she was making, it was, I, I can't. That that's really probably, explain. I would, I would say, and again, nobody knows for sure, but I would, I would, attribute that to maybe a different type of infrasound. Maybe they have different frequencies of infrasound. Like we've heard the ones that, you know, just hit you in the chest and, and it's like a warning to get away, but maybe they have another one where it's calming or for what they use on their, their children, you know, this, I, I just thought of this, but have, have you ever heard recordings of whales? Yeah. And underwater, you know, the sounds that they, it was like when you take the lowest frequency of those whale songs that you hear, it was like that, you know, I don't want to make a fool of myself and try to sound like it, but it was just that, that low little bit and just a little bit of like a, like a whine, you know, and that, that sounds weird too, but it was that that's what it felt like. You know, I, I felt it all, all through me and I was, Mm -hmm. it was pretty wild. And I also get to thinking, you know, would it, cause males and females, even in the human race, usually have, you know, different types of temperaments, 
You know, I do feel like they're quite a bit more primal th- than we are, you know, w- when it comes to dominance and territory and then stuff like that. I, I really, there, there was no feelings of like that I was trespassing anywhere, but it makes me wonder what if, you know, a male, a male ha- had been back there. W- w- I wonder if he would have shown, shown me the kindness that, that she did. Or if he would have just, you know, let me be, you know, or or what would have happened? I think all all of the time, you know, I, I'm an animal lover, and I kind of get to tossing all all these theories around. And what if I just wonder how closely related are we to to Bigfoot? Like, I wonder how much of our DNA we we share with them. Probably more than we know, I guess. It just gets me to, I get going down a bit of a a theoretical rabbit hole when I get to thinking about that kind of stuff because all the there there's just it seems like there's there's so many similarities, right. but between us and them, they are more apish, you, you know, like uh, you know primates. I feel like, but they're 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 more than just that. I think they're half human oh. and half animal, whatever animal that might be. But I think that's what they are. They're half human and half ape or something. I definitely think yeah. they have a lot of human attributes or half of half of what we have. Um, obviously, it sounds like they do, you know. Oh, yeah. There's, um, and, and there's been times um, my wife and I had went to, to Hawking Hills, which is in a uh, tip. Tiffin, Ohio, and there's been times mm-hmm. when we were walking through there, you know, there was this, we we were down at the bottom of it, but there was just this huge ravine that went up and had, you know, ledges with these huge boulders and was kind of just stair-stepping up. And I had that feeling that something was, was up in there. And that made me think even more you know like how i wonder how many times i've been out in the woods because i i I grew up in the woods that was my only time over in west virginia out in their woods but i had grown up you know there's um a couple reservoirs i'm like right in the middle of two big reservoirs that have miles and miles of hiking trails and all that stuff i just wonder if i've ever shared the woods with another and it just amazes me how um what's the word it, it just amazes me how, how they're able to stay hidden you know like i wonder how long they've been perfecting this you, you know like have oh, when it could be thousands of back, years mm-hmm. yeah yeah and, w- and when you go back and listen to the legends that i tend to really lean toward the native American history of them and what, and what they've talked about. And, you know, there's been different explorers that have documented these things. And I just don't see how people can just, I mean, I'm kind of glad that they do, but at the same time, I kind of wish they would believe too. Like, like why, why are you so dead set on not believing in them? Like they are out there, you know? And, Sometimes what all it takes is somebody will have to have their encounter. They will have to have something happen before they even entertain the thought. And that's, that's fine. Yeah. Now we've had people on the show like that. <laughs> yeah. Dad yeah. said, I'm not, I'm not believing anything about that until they saw it. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I feel like with it happening to me at a young age, I, I can't remember really ever. Th- I'm sure I knew about, bigfoot before but i can't ever really i don't remember what what i thought about it you know like it just after that happened i i just knew you know like i just knew that there was that that they're out there and that that i had and that i i had met one i mean not met but but i had come into contact with one and that's just oh you met one for sure you yeah you met, met one, one. In an awesome way. I mean, like I said, that's an awesome encounter because even though you didn't actually see something, to have one in contact and for, you know, how long do you think she was holding you? 
that's that's one of my main that's one of my main questions because also we took a few steps i didn't jump off that ledge i just fell off of it that's that's a, something that i've been tossing around you, for for a while you, like when you hit the bottom did you roll that Maybe you rolled a little extra farther no no I, I don't really remember you know how far i fell there was a feeling of weightlessness before the smack i i guess i could have rolled but we had taken a few steps before she had you know picked me up i wonder what she was doing in that time from the time that i fell hit the ground i'm on the ground i wonder how quickly she found me and how long she held me before putting me you know back and it was I would say she still had a hold of me for maybe like 30 seconds after I came to. And when you're first like, you you know, coming to when I opened my eyes and realized I couldn't see anything, kind of started to try to move around a bit. That's when the vibrations came. And when she started moving a little bit, it was like she had felt me wake up. Or she come probably. To, I would guess she was probably holding you to see if you were going to wake up, and then when you started to move, that's when she decided to. Well, I got to yeah, get him out of here. <laughs> yeah, that's my guess too. Like, I wonder. Like, let's just play around with the hypothetical. Like, what? What if I didn't wake up? You, you know, like what? I wonder if she knew that. What would she have done then? Yeah. Yeah, like I wonder if she knew that I was hurt because if she or how she found there there's some like i said i i have a lot of questions about it that only she could answer and i i doubt i ever get those answers like did she think i was asleep did she know i was hurt did she watch me fall did she hear me fall did she stumble upon me there's so many i would say that her main concern was that no one found her and her family and to get you out of there being a kid was her main concern. Had you not woke up, I hate to say this, but had you not woke up, you may not be here today. Uh, she might have just yeah. hid you away because, you know, next thing you know, if she throws a, a dead kid over the thing and they find her, they're going to want to know what happened. So mm-hmm. I think she's probably doing stuff to keep herself safe, obviously, and, and knowing the right thing to do was just, you're, you're a child, you're not an adult, you're not a threat. You probably didn't know what was going on. Um, she probably knew you guys were in the cave. I think she probably knows oh, yeah. any time people come in that cave. You said you talked to the, was it the the guide director? And, and he was the one that, that told you about all this stuff? Well, the the guy that it's, he like owns, he, he owns the property. He, he's not really involved too much with giving the tours and whatnot. He's, he's just, he runs it. And when I had spoken to him, you know, he was pretty hesitant with me but then we kind of got i got to talking about like you know i would never i would never give your name out i would never you know specifically name the cave i'm just trying to figure out what happened to me i told him that you know i'm not i'm not angry at her for saving my life you know i would never want any harm to come to them i would never bring attention to to his place and With what you you were just saying about her having to think about her family and her safety, you know, what if just, just beyond that ledge was like her, her area? What if I found her hiding spot like that I was looking for, I was looking for a hiding spot. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it just, it it amazes me when, when, when I think about it and even more now that I'm, you know, talking about it because it's, you, you hear stories about dolphins as you know, we consider them one of the smartest mammals besides us that they save people. We see elephants in the way they are with their with their young like animals do have have emotions. And, you know, I've I, I felt felt it in my soul. Her like she was there to, you know, like I don't know why I didn't yell. I don't know why I wasn't. I, I just don't know why I wasn't freaked out. And why I was so calm. The freaking out really didn't start until like a few days later when I'm at home. And, you know, I'm around my family and I wanted to tell them so bad. And then I got to fill in my head with all these, you know, 
the scary thoughts, you, you know, picturing a, you know, just this huge hunking beast that had a hold of me and could have just killed me with no, with, with, with no effort. But the fact that she didn't, you know, I feel like that's what needs to be spread about them. When, when guys are, are out in the woods, you, you know, and, you know, sometimes they're partying, you know, sometimes they're just walking around and sometimes they're actually looking for Bigfoot. I feel like they can almost maybe read, not read intentions, but like, I feel like the animal side of them, I feel like they bluff a lot, you, you know, like I don't see them as dangerous you know, they, of course, they are potentially dangerous because of, you know, how just the sheer size and strength of them. Like, yes, but mm -hmm. I don't think they're dangerous at heart. I think they're they're used to, you know, you know, flinching at somebody and they just take off and they never have to worry about them again. You know, it's that that's their their way of keeping themselves safe, because when you really look at it and you really think about it. You know, there's TV shows called the top five deadliest animals out there, but nobody ever mentions us. We we are the, by far the most dangerous species on this planet. You're absolutely oh, for sure. right. Yep, we agree. Um, so I wonder, you know, they might. It's it's probably hard for them to. I I really don't know. You know, like. I understand that they've, you know, done some aggressive things, you know, thrown rocks and, you, you know, yelled and hollered. Yeah, but again, all that is, all that is in defense of their territory and their family. So, you know, it's yeah. nothing and, more than we would do. Yeah. She know? could, if she wanted to think about this, Toby, she could have just done away with you and yeah. taken your body or done whatever <laughs> they do with their own bodies. But I think she knew you were still alive and breathing when she found you and she was mm -hmm. waiting for you to wake up so she could put you back and get you out of there. So hoping you, you know, you wouldn't say anything, hoping you would just be like, get out of there and, and not talk about it. And, and yes, yeah, they don't want to give up their, their home or their hiding spot. And it's kind of crazy that, you know, they say the caves you want, you know, but there's like secret compartments and secret areas like this one in caves where the, that makes a lot of sense how they can hide in those things because mm -hmm. yep. somebody probably never knew that ledge and that space behind that ledge and whatever they're they're hanging out in is there you know but she yeah. could have she could have done away with you and then it would have been it they would have never found toby and never known what happened to you but yeah she knew yeah, you, you were just alive been another and, lost in a cave yep she knew you were alive and and she waited for you to wake up and she's i'm gonna put him back and get him out of here so i can be safe and he can just go his own way and and that's that that tells you right there that that they have you know they have uh they have feelings and, and they do care um whether it be yeah. a human or, or themselves you know and that's awesome that really is what amazes me about them you know because out of all the, you know, the, the episodes I've heard and, and just the little tidbits that, that I hear, you know, we, we've never talked to, you know, never talked to anybody that's been mauled by a Sasquatch or that has been, it's never, it's always, you know, tactics that they use one to let you know that they're out there. And if you don't listen to that, then they're going to deter you they're going to give you reasons to leave. I feel like they, they know that if they would just, when a human dies in the woods, more humans come out to the woods, you know, and more humans are out there. And I feel like it's almost all that they want is just to be left alone because I think we ruined our chance to live with them and live amongst like with them together a long time ago. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. I think the Indians we're doing that. And, uh, when we came over and took their land and killed them. Brutally, yeah. Yeah. I think, we, I think, I think these creatures saw that and they'd said, well, forget these, forget these white Americans or whatever they are or whoever they are. We're going to go retreat in the woods and stay away from them. And they've watched us over the years do other things. And, you know, they see us become more evil and create yeah. weapons of mass destruction or whatever. And, blow things up and they don't have nothing to do with that. Yeah. Try to imagine this. Let's say that there was a 
another species out there, you know, that came here to America, killed us, skinned us, and wore our skin as clothing. You know, that's the way that they're seeing what we were doing. We were killing, you know, the buffalo and all all the animals we could get our hands on just for their pelts, you know, just for their fur. And and they were watching this. I, I can only imagine the disgust. You know, the Native Americans didn't do that. Yes, they, they used their pelts, but they, they didn't let the whole them. animal. Yeah, they, they, it was for sustenance and for survival. And I think, and I think Bigfoot knew that too, that there was a big difference between the red man and the white man. Sure. And I think they still distinguish it today. I have so many, so many questions, you, you know, I have so many theories and I've thought about actually going out and, you know, trying, trying to do some research, you know, worst case scenario, I, I get to go and explore. So some, some really cool areas, you know, but I, I want to find a way to, I don't know, feel that connection again, I guess. I think you should go back there. I've felt like I, I felt that too. I, I think it would be, I think, I think it would be, um, it's where I'm, it would be healthy to go back there and just therapeutic. You know, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I didn't realize how, how deeply it had affected me until I started working in this mine, uh, about a year ago and all the time while we, you know, we're about 120 feet down below the surface and our mind grows every single day. You know, we find little caverns that down in, in there that some of them are, you know, just the size of just about that big. And, you know, some are, are really big. You know, you could park a park a semi in them. So much cool stuff under the earth's surface. Then all the caverns that are intertwined and connected. We always talk about space and and what's out there when we don't even know what's here. Right. Exactly. Yeah, we talk about that too. We think a lot of things are underground. That that uh, you know the ocean that we don't know what's there. The the ocean is just another space. Mm -hmm. Like we we think we we know what's down there, but we don't. We don't. We well, don't. Have you ever wondered, you know, remember growing up in school, they, they would show a three-dimensional picture of the globe, and it would look like a, just a slice of, like a slice of pie had been taken out of it. And they show you, you know, oh, this is the crust, and this is the mantle, and this is the blah, 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 and this is the core, and it's just lava, and that's it. Mm -hmm. you know, I, how do they know? They don't. They don't. They don't. The farthest they can drill down is not to the center, they you know, know, like no. they think they know or they want to say that's what it is, but they don't know. Right. Mm. Yeah. There's, there's my, my mind goes wild with, with theories of, of about different. Have you heard stuff. of the, have you heard of the hollow earth theory? Of, yes. That's I, I was, that's, that's what I'm talking about. And, you know, that's one of those things where like, I don't ever feel the need to hop on Facebook and argue back and forth with somebody about, oh, you know, no. all earth and all, all this different stuff. I, I'm, I'm just fine with having my, my beliefs, you, you know, or having my theories. My main theory is I don't know, <laughs> but there's a lot of right, stuff exactly. that, I, that I see is very, very plausible. And a lot of these cryptids, I feel like they're coming up. They're coming to the surface. You know, there may be people down there where they feel the need to come up here. They may, you know, some may like it better up here. Who, who knows? But I feel like a lot of, you, you know, paranormal activity and a lot of cryptid activity, you know, I feel like that, that, that comes from below. I think that's you're right. It. I think we, we think yeah. the same way. That's, yeah. Makes more sense because, yeah. you know, we think, I think aliens are, probably inside the earth, but in the ocean, below the water. Absolutely. We've heard about UFOs popping up oh, out of sure. the water and everything. Yeah, they're, so, they're definitely here. I don't think they're oh, yeah. from yeah. thousands and millions of light years away. I, they're, are, they're here. I think there's still those too, but I think the majority of them are already here. Oh, yeah. The oh, yeah. People see. You're a terrestrial, you know, that. And I think they've been here for a very long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's times where I think we're, we're the aliens that came and took over, you know, but that that's for yeah. another, for another discussion. That's another show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hope you feel better talking to us. And, and I want to say it, it, we're grateful for you to tell your story and 
person. Oh yeah, uh, for sure, open man. On our We're, show, it's an for, honor to, for the first to hear time. that. Yeah, I feel I feel a lot. I feel a lot better, and and that's I got I got to thank you guys for giving me you giving me a safe space to, to get it out there because I, I I don't want people to be scared of them. I don't want people to think that they're some sort of you know nuisance or some sort of pest. You, you know there there's nothing right. Um, there's really nothing to be scared of. They're they're just trying to coexist. Yeah. That's why we started this show for for people like you to come on and tell their story in a safe space and and to bring more awareness. We're just as confused as you are, and I'm sure that every other person Absolutely. that's seen these things are just as confused and have more questions like we do. The more we do this, the more questions we come up with. But yeah. it's still exciting and awesome to hear these stories, and that's what it's all about. Well, thank you again, Toby. That was a great encounter. Thank you. Let guys. us know if you get back to uh, West Virginia. Definitely. All right. Well, well, maybe we could take a trip. Hey, I'm down. Oh, that would be awesome. Ah, yeah, I'd if be you ready. Go, <laughs> let us know. We'll we'll go, man. We'll do it. Yeah. I, so I will get. I, I will get in touch with him, and or maybe I won't. Maybe we'll just go. <laughs> let us know. We'll plan something. For, yeah, for real. Let us know. All right. It was really good talking to you guys. You too. Thank you so much. Yeah, you too. Stay in touch. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I will. Have a good one. All right. All right. See you guys. See you. Can you imagine having that? Kind <sighs> I of- couldn't. <laughs> that is, that is wild. <laughs> I mean, like we said, we've had a lot of great encounters and visual encounters, but this one really is great in the fact that physical contact. Yeah, he was actually being held by one, being carried. I know it's it's amazing, and knowing that it was a female on yeah. top of that, and yeah, I got goosebumps all I all through I, that one. I got him again too, and it does show that these things are are you know, can be gentle and caring, you know. I, oh, sure. But yeah, I'm glad he got on and told us. He was the first, we're the first one yeah, no kidding. to talk, talk to about, you know. That, yeah, I'm, and I'm, it was a great honor for him to pick us to do that, so. With that, we'll wrap this up. Listeners, thanks everyone for being here and listening to the show. We appreciate yeah, you Yeah, we all. appreciate all of you. Brian, it's been awesome hanging out with you again, my friend, and doing it's this. Always fun. Always fun. All right, buddy, until next time. See you. Uh,